this was probably not hey! <laughs> you allergic to passion yeah. <laughs> you, you allergic to good ideas <laughs> Issue? No, I'm good. Keep okay. going. Um, but I thought Are you, you a theater major. Yeah. This is all making sense. What? This is all everything. I, every question I've ever had about you is finally. How am I so beautiful? How am I so talented? How am I so confident? How there am I so self-possessed? Hello everyone, it is me, Bob the Drag Queen, host of The Pit Stop, and today we are reviewing episode 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 7 All Winter Season. And my special guest, bitch, is from Chicago. Give it up for Joe Kim Booster, star of Fire Island. Star and writer. And Get it right. I'll shut the hell up, excuse me. And writer. It's what? all my fault. It's did, all my fault. Did you write the whole thing by yourself? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. See, and they say Chicago public school ain't. Hooked on Vonis works for me, baby. Look at that. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here. I am loving the season of Drag Race. I am loving this recycled Monet exchange look. Mm, upcycled, how dare you? <laughs> this is a hand me up. I, I, you know, I said this outfit really deserves to be on a beautiful, stunning woman. And Peppermint was busy, so. You had a very busy June. Yeah, very busy. Um, I, I know that I will have made it when something of mine comes out not during Pride Month. Mm. Um, that's, no, that's when I'll know I've actually made it. Well, but, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with I don't that. See it, I don't see it for me. You know, but you can be the queen of June. Yeah. Y you have this in you. It is officially July. Uh, June is um, gay pride. July is gay shame. You know what you did last month? Bury your head in shame and be embarrassed. You mess. Listen, um, it is so... It's because of you. You're so hot. Mm. You do you get? Are you, I know you're dating now. Yeah. So, but are you still on the on the on the apps? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah, you get. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You two weeks and you can't like, tie this down. In yeah. two weeks, you're like we're gonna be open, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We've never been closed. We never. We, the door has always been open. Ask that the whole time. Honestly. Same. It is an all winter season. Are you enjoying yourself? I am having the time of my life. I will say, like, no more eliminations. Oh. No more cannon fodder. Just get these RuPaul, girls back. RuPaul, don't listen. That's RuPaul. That's not the group opinion. We. This is the only no eliminations you get, RuPaul. Okay, so now you recap Drag Race before. Famously, I've made many enemies in the community. You and Nicole Byer. Me and Nicole Byer. Please. And you and Monet. Oh, we're going there. Had it out. Listen, I didn't have it out with anybody. I was there to do a job, give my honest opinions, and. That is what I did. Now, do you want to say anything to Monet? And she's watching right Monet, now. Monet, you are a queen. I love you. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You look like Linda Evangelista. You know, did you stone those tights? Everything. Like, I hope no hard feelings because I do think she's an amazing queen. I really do. And Monet, if you have anything to say to Joe Kim Boost, you can type it in the comments below. <laughs> All right, so last week, Monet and Jinx were the top two, and Monet won the spoken word lip sync. First time in Drag Race history. Incredible. So cool. We need to see more of it. Because that is closer to what a lot of drag queens do. Very much Some so. of your most famous lip syncs that I've ever seen, spoken word. I would love to see more of that. Now, do you like the idea, so you love the idea of, like, you, maybe you want like to see the comeback, maybe? You want to see what? Would you like to see the idea of like the spoken word lip sync comeback? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's like, it, it feeds into what drag queens actually do out in the wild. I would love to see an actual like mixed, like go from a song into spoken word. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd love to see. I want to see Christian Bale's rant on the set of Terminator. You mean trash your lights, bro? You mean we're done professionally, bro? I want to see You Reese. walk around in the back and da 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 I will trash your lights. We're done, bro. That's what I want to see. I want to see Reese Witherspoon getting pulled over by police. Yes. Do you know who I am? Well, you're going to know who I am. I'm an American citizen with rights and I'm on American soil. Yeah, we want to see actual fights. Mm -hmm. Movies. We want real life actual meltdowns. And if you can't give us that, there's going to be a second Stonewall. Um, okay, so Raja wanted to get blocked. She wanted to know what was up. Officially, every girl has been blocked. Raja walks back into the room. She is hot. She is livid. Beelines away from the girls. To the does, mirror. Does not want to talk to anybody. Comes back and is like, I'm so f mad. There's nothing in this plunger. What do you think she thought it was? That's the crazy thing. Like, at this point in the game, what could it have possibly been? Maybe, She's not seeing anybody else get anything from it. Maybe in the end, you get one extra star. Yeah. Everyone who, maybe you get a star for every time you've been blocked. That would be cool. That would be sick. Imagine. It still could be coming. It's, we got one more episode left. We probably could do anything. Yeah, it's She's true. She's wild. Do you think she actually now regrets 
wanting to get blocked. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's there's nothing in it for her except for keeping her one step away from being in the top four. But also, I mean, it's not like it matters because she didn't win this episode anyway. Right. But we'll get to my opinions later. I think she could have. I think she was robbed once again. She easily could have gotten. I mean, it could have gone to either her or Monet. We'll get there. We will get there. I. We cannot get we cannot get too ahead of ourselves, all right? Now, Trinity points out that Jinx has won four challenges. She's got three stars. She's won four challenges. Are you surprised that Jinx has won the most challenges? No, I'm not, because Jinx's skill set is one that she's so good at this game. Yeah. There's she has the one weakness. And I would have said she had two weaknesses, but she won the dance challenge too. So it's yeah. like there is nothing stopping Jinx, it seems. Except for maybe one thing, which we can get to later. Emotional depth. <laughs> Understanding. Hairlines. <laughs> Except the hairlines, yes, exactly. Meanwhile, Shay has only been in the top one time. It is episode 10, darling. Yeah. Is there any way on God's green earth she's gonna make it to the finale? She could, I think, because this is the problem that they're in now, is if she wins the next challenge and gets a star, then she will be tied with a lot of the girls who have two stars. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit, but Jinx has four. Jada has three. Jada has three, so there's, there's two of the top two. Yeah. Trinity now has three. Trinity, and now one girl is gonna join, leave from the two group to come oh, up to yeah. the top four. Oh, right. Right? Unless there's a big twist. It's like Trinity's like, twist. Trinity's like, she's desperate. She's like, I don't know what the challenge is. I'll do anything. I'll mud wrestle, arm wrestle. Can you wrestle? Oh yeah, I can wrestle. Oh. <laughs> but I always lose on purpose. I fell on and just landed like this. Oh, how did you get back there? You're so strong. <laughs> Um, how do you know Shay Cooley? Because you we were watching and you were like... Shay Cooley and I go way back. We went to high school together. We were in a production of Little Shop of Horrors. Who were you? I was Seymour and she was humble Audrey brag, too. Humble brag, humble yeah. brag. And she was Audrey too? She was Audrey too. What, the stars, I know. darling. They the need stars. to revive. They need to do a revival for you us. You sing? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's amazing. Yeah. So RuPaul walks in and announces that we are doing the roast of each other at the Kennedy Davenport Center Honors. And we get a cute little video of Kennedy Davenport, which I really enjoyed. She's great. I love a roast. Have you ever done a roast before? I have done a couple of roasts in my time as a stand-up comedian. Um, it is the hardest part of comedy, I think. You think so? I think it's definitely hard. I think it is the hardest comedy challenge that Drag Race does, for you sure. You know the most important thing about comedy? Making Timing! Timing. Do it again. <laughs> well, you know the most important thing about comedy. It's hot. Um, it's um. No, no, no. What is it again? Timing. Timing. Works both ways. Yeah, I mean, so what make what makes roasting so hard? With the stand-up challenges on Drag Race, normally there's a lot of different directions you can go. You can be a character. You can talk about your own life. You can talk about you know. Uh, you can tell a story. Any of these things. I think with roasting, it's so specific yeah. what you have to accomplish in a roast. You have to be funny, but you also have to be kind of mean. You have to be incisive. You have to be original. That's the thing with these roasts is like, we've heard every iteration of Michelle Visage, you are a slut. We have heard every single angle on that joke now. And so now to- More angles than Michelle Visage in the, <laughs> in the back room at a so-and-so and so-and-so. So so yeah, yeah, see, we got it. But it's just like, <laughs> To find a new and interesting way to call Michelle Visage a slut is like, it's difficult. It's hard to get there. Try, try, try to tell a way to call her a slut without her getting <laughs> Are, do you have any favorite Drag Race roast moments? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing about the roasts on Drag Race is that unfortunately, some of the bombs are more memorable than some of the actual True. great moments. Like, I'm sorry, but one of the all time great roast moments on Drag Race is Utica. It's Utica. It's Utica bombing. You're so the one, yeah, and her yelling, hard. you're the one bombing. Yeah. Uh, you're the one bombing. <laughs> I also love uh, Pheromone. Let's get this roast to cook. Blair St. Clair, page flips. I mean, I know she's your favorite. This crusty but. asshole. <laughs> Roast 
Roasting one person versus roasting a cast of people, which one seems harder to you? I think roasting one person is definitely harder because yeah, you, you can sort focus. of hit the hits with, yeah. with all of the people. Raja, you're old. Trinity, you're a slut, you're a redneck, you know, like you can hit all, Evie, you have a big, which is apparently an insult. At a normal roast, even as one person, you give a little love to everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you really have to focus in on that one person. And this way you don't have to go so deep. Right. I think it is much easier. I prefer, I prefer a like gangbang. Yeah. yeah, I prefer a gangbang. I was like, versus you like group, yeah. I, yeah I, same. No way. I also love that this little mini challenge they have. They have this mini challenge. You Any put, excuse to get these girls to hum. That's literally it. My Every favorite, season. My favorite part of it is, is Jada trying to explain topping from a completely uh, uninformed get, perspective. You'll get back there and you'll do the things that people like when they're back there. And once you're back there, you will complete the mission, which is to be back there and, and do, the, do thing. the thing. Tell me you're a bottom without telling me you're a bottom. Honestly, we stand. You better work. Now, the queens have as many challenges. They have to put these balloons on the ass of the members of the pit crew, and then you just gotta really hit that pelvic floor to that um, coccyx. Mm. You know what I mean? If you had to choose Bruno or Bryce, Bruno's the really big one, and Bryce is the redhead. Yeah, I mean, I like a sturdy man. You know, I like one who who really ha feels grounded into the floor, so I think Bruno's the one. Bruno is like more to. than sturdy. I would like to climb that mountain. Bruno looks like he could rip a phone book in half. Yeah. And Bryce is also very cute. Yeah, Bryce is very cute. We love I'd probably choose Bryce. Also, so 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 Jinx is like, could you please turn around? Like, Jinx, you're not getting on this thing. Jinx, nice try. Which is surprising. I thought Jinx would actually be better at it than she was, because she's like got MILF energy, and mm -hmm. MILFs tend to be tops. So the popping of the balloons determines the order of the performers. Because of course it does. Obviously. Obviously. So first up is Raja. And bringing up the end is the Vivian. Would you want to go first or would you want to go last or in the middle? Uh, I think I actually would like to go first. I like to set the tone. I like to set the bar. And I think Raja did a really excellent job of setting the bar pretty high. Joel, give me your hand. Listen, I, I want to I wanna try this challenge. OK. This is your audition to be in the picture. OK. <laughs> OK, hold on. Right, Representation right, matters. I get, I'm getting this balloon. All right, hold on. Fly in the balloon. Uh, can we find out what order I'm going to be um, in the roast? Okay. She's just like, a relax your muscles. I'm just like, relax your muscles. I'm just like, relax your muscles. I'm just so, I'm so strong. One, two, three. Ah! Okay. Okay. Ah! Oh. 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 I don't know who's going first, but I know I first. <laughs> So now the Viv points out, she's like, well, I'm British, my humor is different here. Do you feel like they could actually hinder, help, change? I mean, I feel like some of the references might be slightly different, but they speak the same language as us. I mean, depending on where you're from. You're, you're talking to a Scottish person? That is true, that is true. like, well, I don't even know. It's like, get out of here, Shrek. What in the uh, haggis is going on over yeah. here? You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, I think it especially in a roast is not going to hurt her very much. It clearly did, and British humor tends to be meaner, too, so I actually think it's helpful in this case to, yeah. to be coming from that sort of school. At one point she goes, do you all say i I'm like, yeah, bitch, we say Jada and Evie, they've never done a roast on Drag Race. And to my knowledge, they haven't done the haters roast. I don't know if they've done in their personal lives. Is it going to be harder for them? Absolutely, because neither one of them did a stand-up challenge either yet. Yeah, and they're, and they're not particularly known for being funny. In fact, no. they're kind of known for not doing great at comedy challenges. Jada, I think, is one of the funniest queens of the season, like, in life. Like, I could listen to her narrate this season for hours. I think she's so, so funny. But she is so inconsistent in the actual comedy challenges. Yeah. Like, on her season, they did the one-woman show, which I think was the stand-in for the stand-up challenge that year, and she yeah. she bombed that. But but she did well in, in the political challenge, so yep. it is, like, I think when, it is when she can bounce off of other people, she's not bad. When it's just her, by herself, uninterrupted. Pre-written. Yeah, no. This is not a good space for Miss mm -hmm. Essence Hall. This is, when that, this is not where the Essence shows up. Now, Trinity's nervous because she has a very... Storied uh, history. Yes, of being bad at roast. She's not good at them. She's done two, and she's done a terrible job both times. So do you think she should be nervous? I think she should absolutely be nervous. I, I would be nervous if I were her. Like, this is not a skill that you suddenly develop overnight. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, when we'll, we'll, when we get to Trinity's set, I'll talk about it, but yeah, I think that Trinity has some help, which makes sense because she helped 
pretty much everyone every else queen. at every other point. Like well, I'm and you talk about Monet being good at the social game. That's good social yeah. game. Right there. That is true. So we see the queens go in and have a conversation with the hilarious Ross Matthews and the insanely funny Solomon oh, Giorgio. Hilarious comedian. He also has a special on Comedy Central. He's amazing. There's a couple of things. There's being funny. There's being good at stand up. And then there's roasting. There really are all separate skills. I, I think so. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think every stand-up comedian is good at roasting by any means. I'm a perfect example of that. I'm an incredible stand-up comedian. But and I'm, really humble about it, too. I'm really not great at roasting. I'll roast you right now. Go for it. Hit me. Bob the Drag Queen, y your looks on season eight were so good <laughs> that you won the season in that. It's the confidence you have. <laughs> It's the stuttering, it's the scribble, the, it's the, the, the bead of sweat rolling down the, the the fingers, tapping on the edge, the white knuckling of the table. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. That's how I look when I have sex, too. <laughs> just nervous. <laughs> and that's just the topping. <laughs> Anyone in rehearsal stood out to you? Who do you think is going to do a good job? After rehearsal, I think Trinity, no. I'm just kidding. I think um, Monet looks really strong. I mean, Monet is so True. confident. Like, Monet and Jinx after rehearsals, like, it, it seems like a lock. Now, when they're in the room, Monet and Trinity trying to be, like, sneaky. It, it's like, whenever they try to do their life, it's like two kids playing spy. So. They're sneaking in the corner. Girls, there's eight of you. There's not enough people right? to have an alliance. At one point, they were trying to al align themselves with two other people, half the cast. Six of the eight people in this cast know about your alliance already. And Monet's in the corner. It's like that scene in Jurassic Park, the water shaking yes. on the table. And Trudy's like, I live! <laughs> Girl, I live! <laughs> now, we're back in the workroom, right? Getting ready for the thing. And Jinx is like doing this thing where she's like, well, I might not be in the top. Bitch, shut the f up. Yeah, she's doing- Read the room, Jinx, read the room. It's literally, she was literally doing like math lady meme face, like trying to do the calculus. Well, if, if, okay, well, if I, if I were to lose this episode and then snap my leg and can't compete and anymore- And she trips then, and lands in a bag of stars. Introduces a new then, rule where I have to get out my stars. Uh, then I could end up not in the box. Like, bitch, just read the room, Jinx. Yeah. Don't you, go around talking to anyone here about not no. being in the top. Nobody wants to hear it. Not from her. Not from her, certainly. Could you imagine? No. All right, so at this point, the queens think they can still block each other. They don't know that you can't block people. So who do you think, going into this, is the obvious queen to block? I think Viv. I think Viv is Viv. the one. Why like, Viv? It's pointless to block Jada or Jinx, in my opinion, because I think they're Because they're going to be there anyway. They're locks. They're locks. And so you look at the girls with two stars, and I think Viv is, is having uh, a couple of really strong weeks. I think yeah. she is sort of the one to watch. Because as Jinx said a few episodes ago, Vivian has the skill set closest to Jinx. I, I agree, yeah. So I think Viv is the one that I would block if I had the choice. OK, so let's talk about the roast, OK? So the roast starts off, first of all, I like the way the set looks. It looks really yeah. nice. The dance looks really, really beautiful. With the actual, like, the little play on the Kennedy Center. Yeah, like, a little insignia uh, with Kennedy uh, on there. Yeah, yeah. And then Winter Green walks out. Icon. Looking like Ginger Minj on testosterone. <laughs> you said. <laughs> you said. <laughs> she comes out and delivers the iconic Kennedy Davenport, Trey didn't like the session speech, to kick things off and then we get into the roast. Who do you think was the strongest? Like some yeah. of your favorite moments. Based off of like just surprise factor, I thought Raja did really well. I think the thing is with Raja is that like when she competed, it was, it was, the show was different. It was a different show when Raja competed. And so I think a lot of people came in with low expectations because we have, we've, we've only ever seen her on Tutu Da Buddha. That's for true. The last when Raja competed, it was a different show, it was a different century. Yeah. You know what I mean? Actually, seeing her on Drag Race is really cool because she gets to do a lot of stuff. Because she, when she grew up as a kid, she actually she didn't even celebrate Christmas. Not because they were poor, it's because Jesus She's hadn't been born yet. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> Who else stuck out to you? Uh, Jinx, obviously. I mean, but that wasn't necessarily a surprise by any means. I thought Jinx did really well. Honestly, I think too, like, only because we hadn't ever seen her do this at all, 
I thought Evie did pretty good too. My top three were Jinx, Raja, and Monet. I would say my top three were Jinx, Raja, and the Vivian, honestly. The Viv, the Viv also had some very, very great yeah. moments. I would give Jinx the number one spot and I would give Monet and Raja the opportunity to rotate. You're gonna let Viv and Raja rotate? I would say that, yeah. Okay, work. Any jokes that stuck out to you? Any joke that really tickled you? I loved Jinx's Trinity let her ex down easy. Let's said just because cousins. that was very very cool. tight, very quick, like to the point. We get and it. And I've never like, heard that joke before. Yeah, exactly. The jokes that I appreciated the most were the ones that felt sort of fresh. Like I, I was actually surprised we didn't hear a lot of Raja is so old because we've been hearing Raja is so old all season from the girls. So it felt kind of tired at this point to like mm -hmm. hear any reference to that. But like I thought Raja's joke about Shay be only having one star was actually like oh the uber gut, joke gutted that was that gutted. i gagged yeah. i really yeah. gagged it's smart because it is about what is happening now on the show it is not about like anything it's not about Sasha Velour and the Roses. It's not about any of the other like marquee things that we know about Shea Coulee. Mm. It's about something that's going on now. So I, I thought that was really smart. We made a joke smart. about All Stars. Like RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. Shea's been feeling RuPaul's Drag Race One Star. I can't believe no one said that. Should have written that one for Monet too. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that for Monet. Do not <laughs> say that for Monet. Oh God. There was a joke that was like Monet is a classically trained musician, which she is classically trained in opera, and someone said she plays second fiddle to Bob the Drag Queen. I was like, oh, I was like, oh. And, and Monet's been, Monet has, a, has achieved a lot on her own. Standing on my shoulders. Not kidding, <laughs> no. I'm kidding, no. I want to talk about Jade Essence Hall. We got to talk about Jade. Because I was physically uncomfortable. I needed her to acknowledge that she was bombing. Yeah, I mean, there was no other choice. And that's the thing, like, a lot of girls bomb doing these rush challenges. Not a lot of them are able to actually recover and make us laugh by acknowledging the bomb. Like, yeah. that's a skill unto itself that I think only people like Jay to have. All right, Trinity the Tuck, okay. Trinity the Tuck, Herb Rust, I have two words for you. I live! <laughs> Most improved, Most improved in roasting. In roasting. Goes to, which is apparently how you win the game. This, which is apparently how you get a legendary legend, legend star. star. My number one is Jinx. Yeah, it's Jinx. She did a good job. All right, Joe, category is all glowed up. Woo! Light, light, light from the runway. What do you think of this thing? I love this theme because it is not just about like what they're wearing, but it's about the functionality of the dress too, which I think is a really cool idea. And it's like, it's, it's, you know, we're how, like 20 seasons deep into drag race at this point. There's been a lot of themes. So for them to keep digging out new themes is actually quite remarkable. So yeah, this really is the, uh, the runway where, um, where STEM meets fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Up first, we have Raja Gemini. So Raja is wearing this like 200 LED lights. I do think they should have given her more smoke. Yeah. Because when the, when the smoke was there, exactly. the fog, you could see all these beams. And those shoes. Incredible. Out of all the looks, like, this actually looks great with the lights on, too, which yeah. is like, I think not all of them can say that. And Correct. this one, yeah, is, is great. Up next, we have Evie Oddly. I really love this. I thought it was really smart. I love the texture and the hair how it's giving a different sort of kind of mossy forest mm -hmm. vibe to the rest of the mushroom. I think it's great. This is my favorite look of hers all season. Definitely. All Definitely. season. This was, this was a... This stunning. might be my favorite Evie Oddly look of all time. I actually. think you're right. This was very, very yeah. stunning. Good job, girl. You better work. And then we have Shea Coule, who's a sunflower. Gorge. Right? It's so... I mean, oh! No notes. And the way that the sunflower is like, she cuts off the sunflower in the middle too when the lights go out, it's so gorgeous. It's really yeah. arresting. Non-stop good. Yeah. Up next, we have Jinx Monsoon, who is a witch burned at the stake. Brilliant. This was the most unexpected. Definitely, there was a narrative there. It tells, it tells a story, yeah. which I think was so smart, which I think Jinx likes to do, I think, in a lot of her looks, mm -hmm. but this is the most successful version of it, for sure. It has the most impact, and I think this might be the best Jinx has ever looked on the runway. This was the smartest and most impactful look for on the sure. runway, the most unique. Up next, we have Trinity the Tuck, and I don't know, I don't know what I'm looking at. I, I mean, the thing is, it's like, it's gorgeous, but again, like, I think compared to what everyone else is bringing, they're just, I don't know what the point of view is for this one. Girl, I don't live. I don't live. Well. I like that she's standing up. She's walking. 
I actually like the silhouette. I do love the silhouette of the dress, with it, it curves down and a little flare at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that was in any other fabric besides this, I would, I yeah. live. Up next, we have Monet Exchange, who I think is like a like a the night sky. The, uh, yeah, galaxy. She's the only one with, with um, lights in her hair that I noticed yeah. anyway. This one doesn't read as well with the lights off. Yeah, it's it's really Maybe it's the really fabric is too. Thick it's really pretty. Yeah, it's really pretty, but it just it doesn't give light enough when it's when it, the lights are off. I think this is one of the most beautiful ones with the lights on. Exactly. But it's it's about the lights it's being off. It's about the challenge, babe. It's, it's about the challenge. challenge. But she does look very beautiful. She's yeah. so stunning. Up next, we have ah oh, Jada Essence Hall as a mermaid. This is incredible. What like how did she pack this? How did she get it on the plane? This look is so good. I love this one who created a silhouette completely off of her body. Exactly. And this again looks really cool. That is true. Without with the lights, the lights on. on. Yeah, this also, yeah. This that was a very well thought out one. Up next we have the Vivian who's an angel. Yeah. Stunning. It's giving Final Fantasy. It's like Oh video my god, game. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Very bad. This looks great. This was honestly. I, this might be the best runway in the history of Drag Race. I'm thinking about it all together, all like the whole. Oh, I thought you were saying this no, was the best. No, this theme, this theme, this collection. I think this is probably the best runway and probably the most expensive runway. Oh, for sure. In the history of Drag Race. For sure, they had to hire scientists. This is wild. Yeah. Joel, who's your favorite runway? Um, I'm gonna have to give it to Jinx. Honestly. Jinx Monsoon. That was yeah. it. Was very for good. the story, for the impact, for the silhouette, for all of it. I think it's great. Yeah, she turned it. This looks great. Now, a RuPaul announces that there will be no more blocking. No more blocking. She's calling up Roto Rooter. No more platinum plunger, which is actually gold. Gold. The blocking is done. We do still see Rosh. Rosh hold, holding on for dear life. Holding the plunger. Now, how do you think the queens are feeling? I think everyone is really happy about that, except for Trinity and Monet, who spent a good portion of their work day discussing who they would block. Oh my God, that's right, they yeah. did. <laughs> But you're not gonna block anyone, girl. You're actually yeah. going to, you know, live and let live. Yeah. Oh my God, that's Trinity. So disappointed. I live and let live. I live and let live. I'm obsessed. So it's one more main stage challenge, and then the Lala Perusa. Next week is your last chance, and I have a sneaking suspicion there's there's gonna have to be more than one star. Because we know right now the Jinx is gonna has a, a surefire spot. Right. There's no way she's in the top four. She's going to the Lala Perusa. Unless, so, unless she pulls a cornbread. Don't say that. Don't put that in you. Grease the floor. Don't put that in you. Now, after the critiques, we find out the top two queens are Jinx Monsoon, which were like Duh. And Trinity. This blew my mind. I'm beside myself. You think I'm here? Bitch, I'm here. I would not, yeah, it's not the choice I would have made. Um, but I respect RuPaul enough to understand that there must have been a reason. I think that they're the top two because Jinx was the best and Trinity was the most improved. Jinx has four le legend stars. She would have five, which got blocked once, remember? Mm -hmm. And Trinity has three, who would have four, but she got blocked once too. Exactly. The game has really changed. The game has changed. Because now it's Jada has three, Trinity has three, Jinx has four, and everybody else has two except for Shay who has one. Yeah, I have the 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 the, the breakdown here, so I, I usually get a breakdown. That was right, that was right. So your drag. Damn, that was hot. Okay, so Jinx is pretty much guaranteed to be the fan. Yeah. Unless the twist is somebody gets to steal a star like in Mario Party. Yeah. So how do you think Jinx is feeling right now? I think she is feeling great because there's not, nothing, can, she's unstoppable at this point. Like she is going to be in the finals. There is no question about that. She doesn't have to do any math about what if or what could happen. It's done. She's going to the top. She's going to the top. So we find out they are lip syncing to Ava Max. Gay I love this song. icon. Do you like the song? I do. I, I love Ava. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. What do you think of this lip sync? I think those girls were really going for it. I think weird cartwheels. Trinity's filleting Jinx. Th that's the thing with Trinity's lip syncs for me is that she always goes for comedy in a way that's like very aggressive mm -hmm. and a little broad. And it doesn't always land for me, even though I think this is maybe the best lip sync look that we've seen from any of these girls is what Trinity is wearing. It's a great performance outfit. I think she looks stunting. This is actually, I think, the best that Jinx has looked in a lip sync all season. But this boot 
if I see this bitch in this boot one more time, I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cause a scene. It's tough. Not it's... the house down boots, but put the boots beneath the house. I hate these boots. It's hard because you want to root for her, and then she comes out in the boots. And then she comes out in the boots, and then RuPaul announces that Jinx Monsoon wins the lip sync, and I'm like, what is going on? I think my favorite part of this lip sync is how shocked Jinx is when she wins. Okay, so Jinx wins the lip sync. Do you agree with this? I actually think I would have given it to Trinity in this case. Right? I think she looks great. I think she did, or it was a, a, a cleaner lip sync. And she wasn't wearing those boots. And she was not wearing those boots. Yeah, I would have given it to Trinity for sure. So now if Jinx would have blocked someone, who do you think she would have blocked? It's tough. I think that she probably would have blocked Vivian for the reasons that I said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a chance, I as think- As per my last email. <laughs> as per my last email, she would have blocked the Vivian. You got But mail. I think that there's a chance, like, if you're not thinking super hard about it, you would block Jada because she's the one with the most stars. Yeah, for sure. Joe Kim Booster, episode 10, RuPaul's Drag Race, All-Star 7, all winner season. Who is winning? and being crowned the queen of all queens. Listen, I think J Jinx has played an amazing game, but based on the fact that this is being chosen by a lip sync, I think Jada. Jada is all. I think Jada is the dark horse. I think she's done, sort of snuck up from behind and done really well in this competition. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing lip synker. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Monet has a really good chance of it too. Monet is a, a legendary lip synker as well. True. I think like she really, you know, could do well in a lip sync off. And so I think it's it's honestly between those two. It's, it's whichever one ends up in the final four. Joel, thank you so much for joining us. Where can they find you? You can watch Fire Island streaming now on Hulu. You can watch my Netflix special, Psychosexual, on Netflix now. Or you can catch me on Loot on Apple TV+. And where can you see you shirtless? I hate Joel Kim on Instagram. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching at home. This is The Pit Stop. And next week, we are reviewing episode 11. I will see you all there. How do you feel? I feel very safe. Relax your muscles. Feel very safe. Relax your muscles. Does anyone have any poppers? <laughs> yeah, we're about to some jalapeno poppers if you want. All right. You're so strong. Like, you're warm. Are you nervous? Are yeah, you? a little bit. A little Here bit. A little bit. Be gentle. Here it's been a while. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, that's not, this is hard. Oh my God. <laughs>